Let's get creative. Exploring the mind of a musician. Hosted by KV Banks. This show will take an inside look into how professional musicians approach music. This podcast will help gospel musicians unlock their hidden secrets of creating a signature sound through their instruments. It will also motivate musicians to achieve their greatest musical potential by yielding their gifts back to their Heavenly Father. So now, let's get creative. What's going on, family? It's your boy, KV Banks, and I'm excited because you have just tuned into another episode of the Let's Get Creative podcast. Yes, this is the place where we explore the minds of gospel musicians by analyzing their unique approach to music. Oh, we got a good show for you today. Last week, we began a journey inside of In the Midst of It All by Yolanda Adams. And man, that podcast was so good that we broke it up into two parts. So today we're going to continue diving through the rest of the song and looking at how we can utilize these chords, these progressions that we use into other areas of our playing but before we get into it you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna ask for a favor i need you to text and tell somebody to tune in with you whether you're listening on our podcast platforms whether it's apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, spotify wherever you're listening from go ahead and shoot over the link to somebody else and tell them to listen in with you if you're watching on our youtube channel if you are or if you want to see the chorus that's being played join us on our youtube channel at kingdom keys nation also go ahead and share the link to your facebook friends instagram twitter tell somebody to tune in with you and use the hashtag lgc the podcast that's lgc the podcast i'm excited we got a good show for you today let's go ahead and get into part two of in the midst of it all okay here here here's here's a great tip when you're playing, I always I teach my students this, that whenever we're we're looking at chord progressions and, and things to play, I always equate it to driving a car. So you leave your house in your car and you're going, you know, wherever, wherever your next destination is, we're going to work, school or whatever. Now, in your area, you know how to get there. You know what streets to take. You probably have a route that you most commonly take, you know, your frequent route. However, that route that you take is not the only way to get to where you're trying to go. There's a long way of going. You know, you can make you could turn a 15 minute trip into an hour if you wanted to. You know, it can it be 30 minutes. If you know a shortcut, you maybe have cut that 15 minutes down to 12 minutes or maybe 10 minutes, depending on how much of a shortcut you hit. So think about like that moving from one chord to the next It can be as short or as long as you want it to be. All that I'm doing right here is still to get to this A minor chord. That's the goal. But he's stretching this whole movement out. So we're doing this diminished pass that could very well lead to the six. And then he adds on top of this a seven, three, six movement to get us there as well. So it's like he's just compounding all of these movements into one. And it seems like he's doing so much. But really, the goal is still the same. He's still trying to get to the same chord. That <laughs> That's what really makes it fun. That's what makes his playing the song so fun is that he's exhausting all of the options that he has. Well, maybe not all of them. I don't know, you know, what all he has in his vocabulary as a musician or what all he could have done, which we, we can come up with other ideas of getting there as well. But in in all of that time that he has, he's filling it up with movements. That's one of the biggest keys of we say like gospel music within gospel or especially traditional gospel. You hear a lot of traditional gospel musicians. They're playing all of these chords and there's a lot of movements, a lot of feels and things like that, because in gospel, it's like we're filling up that space with a lot of movements, you know, filling up all those, you know, the, the the those those empty areas 
with chords and progressions that kind of is what it helps within the passion of gospel music you know and traditional gospel music especially because it's like it's a really emotional uh, uh style of music and so you feel it and so it comes out in our interpretation within our chords so all the movements that you hear it's just really our expression all right that's how we're feeling it um but you don't really hear that type of you know, movement or hear those type of chord progressions in your traditional CCM movements, you know, or CCM songs, for example, you see what I'm saying? So, you know, a lot of times in those moments, because it's not necessarily as I'm not going to say it's not as passionate because there is a passion, but it's coming from a different place. It's coming from a different it being interpreted in a different way. So in a traditional gospel, it's more or less, you know, from the inside, I'm kind of releasing myself. I, I am, you know, I'm expressing my heart, you know, my passion, my, my you know, it, a lot of, uh, I'm going to say frustrations, but it really just derives from where it comes from. I don't want to go into this whole lecture. This is going to take the <laughs> it's going to take the podcast into a different direction and, and open up a different discussion that I may do on another episode. You know, hey, we can probably have this conversation later on down the road if you, you want to hear more about that drop down in the comments or shoot us a message and uh i'll go ahead and make plans to make this a part of the discussion for it but within like ccm there's a lot more open space there's a lot more you know it's not as much movement happening in the chords and it's and it's on purpose there's a reason for that but i'll get into that another time so he's filling up a lot of these areas with uh with chords and with movements you know, and they're being placed tastefully. He's not being so busy that he's pulling away from what Yolanda is doing. You know, he's complimenting her in a very uh, um, masterful way. Another musician I would love for you guys to go and, and take a close study at is the late Thomas Whitfield. Thomas Whitfield, in my opinion, was a master at playing with a soloist. You will he listen to him playing on the piano behind, you know, someone singing it like he filled in the gap between when the singer stopped singing and when they began singing. But while they were singing, his, his chords were literally just following them, just with them, you know, and he did all of his sweet stuff or anything outside of that, you know, to kind of keep the song on the same level as the singer, not allowing the music to fall or the or the song to fall in those open spaces. He, he filled it up perfectly and, and and he played like it was like he, he, he like filled every gap. And then once the singer came back in, you know he falls back so it's all right that's that's another discussion man <laughs> got me got me started man all right all right uh so i'm doing this here seven i'm doing a b7 sharp nine sharp five so here's my b7 is b e flat on the left hand the a in the right hand makes the b7 which is a dominant chord uh d and then i play in a g so the D is the sharp nine, the G is the sharp five. Um, I'm kind of like I'm playing this little melody. I keep hearing this. Now, check this out. We got another dominant chord. Uh, oh, that's nice. I played that by mistake. I like that. See that C major over this E and B. But then I come to this E7 flat 9. Another dominant chord. Why are we playing a dominant chord, family? Why are we playing another dominant chord? Because we are going, finally, getting to this A minor chord. All of this is still has been to try to get to this A minor chord. That is hilarious. Okay, so. Uh, okay. Then we got. So, uh, now, 
that last time I just did that. Um, a minor to a G major, back to the A minor again. Or, or you can play, which I believe is what he really did. Yeah, he did something like that on the actual song. Yeah, so it's like a diminished chord. Now, A minor, uh, really a uh, B diminished. Back to the A minor again, over C. To a G, G major over D. Left hand comes up to a G, D, and an E. And that pinky finger drops down to an F sharp. The right hand. So it's a G major chord. And I'm like trill over this A and B. And then land on that F sharp. Okay. So you gotta practice that one. Uh. Okay. Right. We got that lick again. We did that earlier. D, E flat, E, G. Um, now we add this A to the G. So this here, we got this uh, G is in the bass, and we got an E F C, and just walk this down. Okay, and that's over. It's over G. Okay. All right, so we move it through. playing is that that dominant chord there oh uh, that, that 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 f you can do with or without it it's up to you all right next part okay <laughs> i love this it sounds beautiful that if you want to kind of add some more weight in your left hand but what i'm doing i'm left hand is walking out from this f sharp f e so mind you the e is the goal here okay all right uh what's the chord i'm playing uh this this e minor seven sharp 11 okay i think we played this earlier no, I think it might have been a D minor seven, um, but either either way, still same same type of chord. So, duh. so we got an F sharp seven, flat nine. Now instead, what what we're not doing, we're not going to the five of this because that's usually how we've been playing this chord. We've been going to a fifth of it, you know. So that would have been, you know. So like that, <laughs> um, the five of F sharp would be the C sharp, but that's not what we're doing. We're walking down. Um, yeah, to a diminished chord, uh, F diminished seven. Okay. So, And that melody line, remember that, that melody line we're falling again. Da, 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 da. Okay. Now, and I, ooh, ooh, okay. 
And I didn't even think about this before because the first time we had that melody line, it was in the very beginning where we did the. We were trying to get to the C. So technically, we're kind of doing the same thing. We're getting back to the one because the song at this point, now we're about to see why it's important to have an exhausted vocabulary of different movements and ideas because he's about to play the same thing, the same, like the same structure. The song is, has the same structure, but he now has to play them in a different way. So it does not sound identical to the intro or the first part of the song. Okay. So this is, this is why it's really good to figure out how many different ways can you get to this one place. Think about it from our same analogy with driving. Okay, so you have your normal route that you take to get to work, but what if that road is closed because of construction or maybe there's an accident, so everything is being detoured somewhere else? You know, well, you can sit in traffic, you know, and and add an extra, you know, 20, 30 minutes to your trip, or if you know another way of getting there, you know, a shorter cut, you know, a shortcut or an alternate route, you can cut time and, and avoid some heavy traffic, you know, not having to sit there. So that's what we're doing. We are looking at as how many different ways and some creating some new routes to get to these same places. So instead of actually going to the one now, we're going to the three, which a lot of times can be used as like a substitution to the one. But instead of playing a regular C major over that three, He's playing uh, this here. I'm sorry. I have to find the chord again. <laughs> An E minor 7 sharp 11. And this E minor, the whole root of that, we understand your diatonic triads and things like that, where the minor of the three is actually a minor chord that you will play. All right. So it's not natively a, a major chord. It is actually a minor chord there. Okay. So there's that. But what he did to get to it, which is really great. I love this. So he goes F sharp seven flat nine. Then he goes here to an F diminished seven to get to that E seven, uh, E minor seven sharp eleven. Okay. Another way of looking at it is kind of like if I was looking at trying to get to this minor chord, almost doing like a seven, what could be a three, which would be that B, because I could do the same chord with that B. I could say, I could do something like that. You know. Or. Or if I didn't, if I wasn't trying to stick with this melody, da, 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 if I want to do something different from that, I could go. I could put a, a seven a flat nine chord right there, too. Or, or I could say. Yeah, I like that voicing better. If I was gonna do it, you know, but yeah, and that's that B. Oh man, tritone is a tritone substitution. That's another conversation. We'll get into that. That's a tritone. You can, in essence, like tritone substitutions will allow you to play the same chord with a different bass note. Dope stuff. I love it. All right. <laughs> okay. Now we're we we're about to do the same thing. The D is now the goal again. Okay, we're trying to get to this D minor chord. That's the goal. That's the goal. So we did this. We're about to, he's about to do the same thing he did when he did that over the trying to get to the A minor in a different way. He's using a diminished chord surrounding the D to get him there. He does that. Okay, so go A, uh, E, D, uh, C sharp, and actually drops to the A. So he does an E diminished seven, D diminished seven, and then a D flat diminished seven or a C sharp, same thing. And then he drops that bass, that D flat to an A, creating this A seven flat nine, which we know is the fifth, one, two, three, four, five of that D. Okay, so. 
Okay. Okay. So, uh, and that same thing, remember? He's rolling into these chords to make them really big and, you know, you know, create a lot of presence with these movements by rolling them. Okay. This here, that movement, <laughs> it's just ridiculousness. <laughs> They're all dominant chords and he's playing a circle of fourths. Okay. And he's choosing it, you know, these all dominant chords, as I said, track dominant chords, tritones naturally come with the dominant chords. It's cool if you actually go with tritones, playing tritones. If you go by fourths, you can you can go down half steps. If you go in by fifths, you can go up by half steps. Talk about that later, though. Okay. We're almost done here, so. If I had to break this, make, 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 break this up into another part. <laughs> All right. Okay, so right here. Uh, a flat diminished seven, G diminished seven. minor six to get to our G. I'm trying to get to the five. C major over G. So Okay. A, a flat diminished seven. G diminished seven. Uh, F minor six. Okay. A flat C D and F uh, F in the left hand and then he does the same thing playing with those inversions everything is just the same repeat things and then we got the uh, C major add two over G and then we're back to doing the same things we did before So that's the only part that's kind of new, but it's still the same thing. So after we did the, okay, then he's getting back to the D. Okay, that D minor. Or you can drop that. That second note was in that bass. You can take that out of the right hand to kind of open the chord up a little bit. D, that D minor chord. minor six again remember i told you you gotta commit that movement to memory okay there is again all right so that we got some more uh ccm chords <laughs> so we're back to that again g sus4 Spread voicing on the A, A, E, C, if you have it. If not, you can play the G, okay? Uh, uh, okay, D13 says, okay, cool. Uh, let me make sure I'm playing this right. Yep, this is it. So, we got another dominant chord again, remember? We got C major with this D, F sharp, and B in the left hand. And then back to our G, G7 that we did in the intro. Same, same thing in the intro. Okay, then. Yeah. That movement there. 
okay i believe i talked we talked about this on another episode i want to say when we had twan uh twan green on on the show and we talked about this as well um i believe i believe it was with twan oh that was another great episode check that one out too uh creating these little movements like you've, you've probably heard something like this where you're kind of playing like in the middle of the court like you're all you what, what you're really doing in essence is creating a little bit of suspense before you resolve okay so the whole thing is to get to the c major chord and i have it spread out so i have the fifth in my left hand so c and g and i'm trying to end on this this e and c in my right hand but what i'm doing is i'm playing along in the scale so like both notes are moving in the same direction along the scale okay okay so that's what he did in that movement okay so that is the entire intro okay and there's there's a lot a lot in there oh and let, let me go back this movement here i want you to be able to learn how to do that in every key uh. <laughs> i need to do it in every key <laughs> that's a that's a great way like if you when you're playing a song and you're you're ready to end it that could be a really nice movement that you can play to end out a progression okay but that as i said that is the entire introduction yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, so, uh, one thing I will say is this, and and when I teach the song to my students, I generally teach the song backwards. So when you actually look at the part, once the band actually comes in and they, they start playing, like you notice that a lot of those movements that he was playing, he, they're, he's t- been taken out. So it's now it's a lot more simpler. And so it's easier to really see those main chords, those pillar chords that are holding up the song, that are creating the structure for the song. So once he gets to it. Now we're just playing, just playing the song simply.
like now you see at this point now we're just repeating the same things yeah uh, now you've heard this movement here before right right uh do it c major over e d minor with the f's c major over g and then i do a b major over a creating that dominant chord back to a d minor over b and then back to c major but what he did instead was he 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 tricked the ear so he went back We're using that same type of substitution now where instead of landing on the C and ending there, we're going back to that E. Uh, okay, yeah. That was another movie in there. Uh. <laughs> Just being obnoxious with these movements, like, because remember we're doing this. Duh. So he took this movement, played notes along along with this chord. Because there's a C minor chord in there, right? Then he got this E diminished chord. Then because that's also in the chord as well. So he's just playing around. With notes in there, with notes that are in that chord that he just did. Uh, what do you do right there? Uh, 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 sharp diminish uh to a g that's what we did right there now i think it's at this point we does that movement so i think i did a little too soon but <laughs> you get the point same thing you know uh, So that order the cup, yep. Be in the midst of it, oh, right. So check this out. Now we go to the four. So same thing. Walk to the four, D. Try and get to the six. So we play the A flat diminished chord to get to the A minor. All right. G major over uh, D. Okay, that same thing like the we're recycling the same stuff, it's just simplified now. So I got a G uh, uh G minor six over that G, right? That comes to C7 flat nine. Seeing this chord again. F major. Okay, so uh so I do this. You probably heard this move before. E major chord, which I was playing uh, something earlier. I like the sound of this dominant chord there instead. Putting that D instead of just a reg regular E. But you can play it either way you want. You can play a straight E major chord or you play it like this. It's up to you. But now I'm doing the same thing. I'm walking up, remember, just like the intro of the song. Instead of just playing that spread voicing now, because at this point, there's an entire band. So there's a bass player. So I don't need to really play as much in the bass as I was before. When you're playing with the band, 
keep that in mind. When you're playing with the band, you don't have to add, you know, or you don't have to do so much. When you have other members in the band playing with you, now you can pull back on what you're doing and allow the band to carry out their assignment. So if there's a bass player there, why am I playing bass? I don't have to play bass. Let me play chords, okay? <laughs> Let the bass player play, uh, cover that. So, all right, just like that. Uh, uh, oh, uh, where would part Doing that same thing I did that earlier, D diminish, D flat diminish. Back here, same those same chords that we did already. I think they actually do that twice. You know, they go back into it. All right, so now at that that end, we, we're here now at the vamp, and this is really it after this. So now we have a B flat major seven over the C, which really makes it a C thirteen. So let's take this F down to an E, and then I'm gonna take this whole thing down a whole step. So a B flat thirteen uh, sus for a uh, thirteen sus. Take that E flat down to a D. the actual song we go you all remember we talked about this before six uh two five one four uh yeah you play a, a dominant chord over that d get us back to the five All right, so let's break it down. So, so over the five, we got this here. That chord we've already played this before. Okay, I right, did this part. Then we come here to the C nine thirteen. We did this as well. These are chords that we're just recycling. Look at part one. Uh, you know, if you didn't catch the breakdown of these chords, definitely in part one. Uh, I'm playing the F major nine. You don't necessarily have to play this. You could probably do that. I think that's more or less accurate. What is actually having more of a dominant chord sound that's happening there. Okay. Then a C7 sharp 9 sharp 5. Okay. Check this out. They play this uh, A flat uh, major over uh, an F, which makes really just an F minor seven. Okay. Yeah. Right hand is playing A flat major to a B flat major, C minor back to a B flat major. So it's kind of something like they're playing around with different keys. So. And when we get to that B flat, the left hand comes to uh, B flat as well. 
Okay, and then it's repeat. All right, that's a nice little piano lick that they did in that part. I'm playing octaves. I slur from this E flat to an E. And I go E, G, A to the C. So... Okay, when I do that, I land on that what we did the the C9 13 because the bass player is carrying that C. I'm playing the bass so you understand what's happening, but all these chords that I'm playing, you can do this in your left hand, you know, or even double up in both hands. If you for for that bass B flat of uh, to B up to the C, you can play that with, with tritones in your left hand, so that you can free up your left hand. Uh, if you have a bass player, uh, um, what what's that part right here? Uh, <laughs> uh, same thing from the beginning. Or the beginning part of this uh, this little drive right here. Mm, uh, so. So it's like a two, five, and then one. So two, I'm doing a C minor in the right hand over the D. Five, I'm doing a G. Um, D minor, and then going to the one. Uh, which I can really go back to my B major 9 chord over C that I was doing. So if I have a bass player carrying that, I can do the tritones for it. So I can play this over the D. So I'm playing that F sharp and C. Then for the G, I'm playing an F and B in the left hand. And then what would be the C? I'm playing that E and B flat. So... something like that all right um but that's really that is the entire song now at that point you know sure if they go back there or not i'm just kind of <laughs> just playing around at this point but that is the entire song and there as you see now why i said there's so much in here there's so many nuggets that can be learned that can be pulled from this uh especially as a gospel keyboard there's 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 this song gets loaded with traditional movements even contemporary movements come down to ccm all of that is within this song. I love it, family. All right, family. So listen, I pray that you have enjoyed this. Make sure you check out part one as well as part two of this uh, song. It's hilarious because I didn't even plan to go through the entire song. I really was just going to focus on the intro, but it got so good. I said, we got to go ahead and deal with this thing here. <laughs> so I pray you did enjoy that. Go ahead and drop down in the comments any thoughts or questions that you may have about it. And we will make sure that we address them family. All right. The preceding program has been paid for and sponsored by Kingdom Key School of Music.